today's lecture we will be discussing some portions of the geological work of streams now the we discuss about streams uh, this is the concept you all must have studied in um, in your school level uh, the water cycle where the water from the ocean which uh, evaporates and it forms clouds it precipitates and the precipitation some part of it's converting into ice and forms a part of glacier some part of it uh, started flowing through the surface as a process and it is surface runoff uh, and it reaches the sea and some part of that which will be absorbed by the soil which infiltrate and it moves as a groundwater and some part of it which will be uh, used by uh, plants or uh, plants and uh, that will be uh transpiration process from the plants and it reaches the atmosphere by so this is a complete cyclic process of water which is on the surface of the earth so if you see a stream or a river it uh, originates from uh, a hilly terrain okay and it uh, flows through the different landforms uh, and finally it reaches the sea this is the total life of it Uh, river and if you see the longitudinal profile of this river this we can divide basically into three parts the first part we call it as the head region the second part we call it as the middle region and the third part we call it as the mouth so the activity of river in this all three different parts are different like if you see it in the head region where the slope is very high very high and the flow of water the velocity of water the activities of water the energy of the water will be very high in the high land region or the head region so in that region the river is more dynamic it is capable to carry large amount of loads large amount of sediments it can able to erode and it can able to transport to the foot hill or the base of the valley so in this part we call it as the head region or we call this region where the river activity is in youth stage that it is very dynamic stage of the river okay so it reaches up to some part in the middle of the river middle of the river when it reaches where what happens the river reduces its capacity here in this part the a uh, slope is very high river is capable to carry large sediments but when it reaches into some part when we uh, crosses at some slope level then the slope of the river gradually decreases so here the slope was very high but when you come here the slope is uh, reduces and in as a result the slope reduces the river will not be able to carry all this uh, high amount of load which is carrying from this part from this part as a result it will start depositing the sediments here and it will also take some uh, meandering channels meandering channels means it is nothing but it is the channel which is flowing through this curve nature because of the change in the slope the river is not able to flow uh, or carry the load so it actually takes a curved path and uh, in that stage we consider the river is in the mature stage okay so in the old in the in the uh, youth stage the river is capable to do a lot of uh, work it is highly energetic highly dynamic but in the case of mature stage the river is not capable to carry all this high amount of load rather it will be selectively transporting the material and in this stage the erosion activity will be very high and in this stage in the case of middle stage where the erosion deposition processes would be a, uh, in in uh, in uh, uh, matching so there would be almost the same amount of erosion deposition processes but when it comes to the very very uh, very end of the river at this stage we call the river is in the mouth stage or the river is in its old stage the old stage because the river in this part is not capable to carry all its load rather the process of more activities of deposition because the part will become almost uh, almost horizontal and it will be in uh, it will be uh, it will be uh, meeting the 
sea so at this part the river is very very uh, gently sloping and the amount of uh, materials which are transporting from the high head region to the middle region and it is more dominated by the deposition of that uh, material so this part we call it as the mouth stage or all the or the old stage of the river so this is what a river which we are talking about and if you see the cross section of this river this is the river in it the uh, this this part at the uh, head region so if you see the cross section the river valley this is the river valley the river valley is very narrow and it is bounded by hard rocks hard rocks means it is highly compact and dense uh, resistive rocks whereas it comes to the uh, comes to this region where it is the the middle region or in the intersection of middle or the mouth and the middle region where the river is flowing in a wider valley the valley is very wider and the 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 water is we if you see that it is um, um, uh, it is uh, uh, flowing through a uh, the valley uh, which is uh, wider in nature okay so this is the uh, area and uh, this river if it is flowing in this part it doesn't mean that it will only flow in this channel throughout the year there are number of cases that this channel may shift from this part to uh, something like this so water will be flowing on this channel or sometime this may flow on this part sometime it may flow on this part or what we are uh, what i am saying is that the channel which is flowing right now on this channel will have different processes it may shift the channel anywhere in this part some area it will flow on this part this is one area and when it comes to other part it may shift from this part to this part so this kind of changes in the river are possible in this part of the river whereas in the head region it is mostly flowing through the uh, bedrock so the chances of shifting of river is a little bit uh, difficult or it is not uh, that much easy to shift the river rather it will be more eroding and deepening of the valley processes will be active and uh, here i am talking about uh, some of the uh, some of the terminologies which are associated with a river a river stream is uh, nothing but which is a surface water flowing in a channel of their own so there are well defined channels the river is established a channel Uh, and that is called a streams okay so a river is what it is a large stream flowing through large area and receiving other streams from sides of uh, sides is called a uh, river so if you see here this is a stream this is a stream and this streams meet to one major stream here and this is another stream and this is another stream this streams meet uh, meets the large river so this we call it as a river and these are all the streams and other than that during the the rainy season during the water uh, uh, raining season there are number of small channels which may be developing here all, all but uh, these are not called still streams because this is not a permanent uh, feature this this uh, stream which is producing is not a permanent feature like if you see here there may be some streams flowing here water from here it may be contributing to this river but this is still not a fixed channel so that is not called a stream a tributary is nothing but a small channel running to a large river so streams are also called sometimes tributaries which was because that particular stream contributes to a major channel so drainage system is actually the connection of all these streams and uh, rivers collectively it called a drainage system for example this is one drainage system which includes all this this is a one single drainage system okay so this is what uh, we call it as a drainage system that means the water flowing on this part all this will be contributing to this uh, river okay so this boundary what i have drawn here this boundary what it indicate a water which is flowing on this part will be contributing to this river is called the drainage basin so every river will have a drainage basin that is a topographically divided portion from where a particular river collects water okay so in this stream if you see a water which is flowing on this part 
it may not be contributing to this river rather it will be flowing through this river there may be another river flowing here and that will be contributing to that river so that river will have another drainage basin so drainage basin means it is a it is a region from which one particular river collects water okay so that particular boundary or the topographical barrier from which the water collects is called a drainage basin so to make you little more clear about uh, clear about this drainage basin concept i am just uh, sharing another screen right now what you are seeing on the screen is our uh, part of the uh, gujarat we call it as a mainland gujarat and uh, there is one river which is flowing here this river is called narmada and here we have tapi uh, this is sambarmati river three rivers major rivers and narmada become one of the major west flowing river in the uh, in the uh, gujarat or in in, in in india correct if you see the narmada river which flows through this part it is in the madhya pradesh uh, and which comes into the uh, gujarat alluvial plain we call it as an alluvial plain and this is what i was talking about in this part the river is taking um, so in, in this part if you see the river is taking uh, a, a general uh, topographical uh, flow and it is flowing through the mature stage and uh, if you see if you see these are all uh, the meanders okay so this uh, channel this is what i was talking about the river doesn't flow in its uh, mature stage it doesn't flow in it in its so one path there are number of areas where it is changing see this part if you see here there is a change in the river what happens to the uh, river it shifted from this bank to this bank okay and in this part also if you see the river is shifted similarly if you see this part the river shifted from this part to this part northern shifting and southern shifting so this is actually the process of the river and if you go to the mouth portion of the river we can see that the river is now uh, meeting the cambe basin cambe and here it is the uh, it is the part where it is more depositional and you will see number of depositional features here okay so uh, this is uh, one thing and uh, if you are talking about the uh, if you are talking about the drainage basin of this river this is what we are seeing the river right now from a top view and if you want to see the cross section that how the height varies for example i am going to do is see this is the river okay and uh, what i am going to make a cross section of this river and uh, now i am as i said i, I reach the uh, uh, reach the hill okay so you see now how the how the how the variation of the river is okay so where i am going to talk here this is the uh, the main the region where it is on the flood plain what is the elevation here it is almost 0 meters see the river is flowing almost 0 meters to 45 meter to then slowly increasing then it is going to the highland where it is flowing through the hilly terrains and the elevation you see now it is 204 meter 118 meter then it increases 176 it goes up see this is how the variation of the uh, height so the elevation of this river which is flowing from madhya pradesh is got from 500 meters to around 0 meter elevation okay so this is what a river so obviously the river which is flowing on this part which is basically more uh, erosion feature in nature but in this part where it comes to the uh, alluvial plain it will be more depositional in nature now what we are going to see is that what geological activities this rivers are doing so any river which is flowing which will be doing three main processes first process is called a erosion second process is called a transportation and third process is called a deposition erosion is nothing but this is a bedrock bedrock means is a rock over which the water flows and here in the top it is the uh this is the uh, this is the air okay this is uh, atmosphere and uh, this is the boundary of water 
okay and this is the boundary of the rock through which the water flows so this is a rock voila rock portion this is the water column and this is air so water when it is flowing through the surface there are number of small areas where this rocks will be having some uh, some uh, fractures or as or some uh, uh, surface features which will enable this water to weather weathering is what it is actually a detachment of uh, material from the surface of any solid rock okay so this detached material this process is called weathering weathering doesn't uh, remove the uh, remove the material from the surface rather weathering will produce something that will be slightly detached from the surface of the uh, the rock now this water which is flowing here it will put some pressure on this weathered loose material and that will be picked and that will move from one portion to another portion then the process is called erosion correct so this eroded material will be transported by this water in different modes either it will roll if it is very heavy then it is it will just roll down okay sometimes it may be taken into suspension so this all processes we call it as a we call it as a transportation okay so this is erosion and this is transportation and deposition i am not going showing here deposition is the feature where this transported materials will be deposited somewhere and it will produce some landforms so that process is called a deposition process so river do all these processes what are those three erosion transportation and deposition okay so the geological action of river for a civil engineer this three processes are important to understand where the rivers are eroding where the rivers are transportation is not very important but how it is transporting but uh, where it is depositing which is the deposition and which is the erosional end and which is the uh, transportational features of a river so that is what we are going to see one by one first one let us see the methods of erosion of the river there are four main processes one is uh, uh, hydraulic action second one is abrasion third one it is called attrition and fourth one it is called corrosion uh, these are all simple processes first one it is a uh, hydraulic action this picking up of the sediment is by the water there is no other uh, agent which is involved in picking up this water so this is what the process we call it as a hydraulic action so hydraulic action is the mechanism of loosing and removal of rock by water so this is called hydraulic action so sometimes in the case of a waterfalls we usually see you know, what this is a waterfall and the waterfall when the water flows from this uh, this uh, height which uh, mix with the uh, air and uh, it creates some depressions or the erosions in this part and this process we call it as a cavitation process okay it's a water and the air combined together which erodes we call it as a cavitation process and uh, this is a sub part of the hydraulic action then there is a process called abrasion abrasion is what abrasion is the eroded material now there are materials which are eroded by the water now this material this sediment we call it as a sediment this sediment which collide with the silt sediment will produce small pieces of fraction so this process water and the sediment together will hit this part and it erodes the material from the here that process is called a abrasion process one is collision between this that is one and this eroded material interacting with this that is another portion and this collision of sediment and the water together when it erodes the material we call it as a abrasion process is nothing but water is having fine grains of uh, some rock particles so when the water hits the rock surface along with that there are some grains also hit the rock surface as a result the erosion processes will be more and that will be more active so that process we call it as a abrasion whereas the breaking up of materials by mutual collision is called a process of attrition there are two materials 
two sediments which are eroded already now this sediment if i move along with the water and hit on this then these two things will hit together and break into four pieces so that process is called a attrition process okay so that is uh, attrition and solution activity which is uh, nothing but the chemical process so dissolved materials and you see water at, uh, at our uh, home this water will not have any sediments within that but if you pass that water through a filter then we'll see that there are so many materials coming out so these all things are dissolved materials in the water so that is a solution activity so these are the three main processes by which a river do its erosion correct so what are the processes first is hydraulic action then abrasion then attrition then it is the corrosion corrosion is the chemical action and it produces a solution so it dissolves in the water so uh, one more thing what we are going to discuss here it is uh, the day rate of this erosion processes will be basically depend on number of parameters number one it is velocity of the stream and velocity of the stream is also not uh, uh, uniform in all the parts of the stream for example this a a is a cross section of this section which is showing at this part where in this end if you see it is uh, mostly a depositional low energy condition because the river flows in this way and the major energy coming to this end so this is the part where it produces high velocity whereas in this part uh, whereas towards the stream it will be less part so my, the point is that when the river flows there are uh, di different areas will have different velocity of stream so where it is having more velocity it will erode more if you remember the first uh, lecture the introductory lecture i was talking about the baruch erosion process that is this criteria when there is a more velocity there would be more erosion where there is a less velocity there would be more uh, deposition so this is the process it happens so velocity is one part which controls the uh, dip, uh, the erosion nature of the river second one it is the lithology of the rock if the rock is more stable hard rocks then there would be less erosion but if the rocks are of loose material then the sides will be colliding more easily and it can create more wider channels as a result the velocity decreases more deposition will happen so that kind of a dynamic system is there so lithology of the rock there are some rocks which are very easy to erode but there are some rocks which are not easy to erode so the rocks which are easy to erode will produce more erosion but whereas the rocks which is uh, um, resistant to erosion will produce less uh, uh, less uh, erosion processes so velocity is one thing velocity is also controlled by the shape of the river if it is a narrow river then it will be more faster like this here the river is uh, wider but when it comes to this part it is more narrow so this portion will erode more so similarly when there is a lithology easy to erode it will erode easily but it is a compact uh, resistive rocks will produce less erosion process and last one it is the load load is that the 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 carrying the materials which is carrying by the river so if the river is already carrying a lot of materials and it is not having a capacity to erode more the erosion processes on that river will be less so depending on the load if it is not having any road it is not having suspended load or it is not having any materials carrying by the river so it will have more energy to erode and the processes of erosion will be more in the case of rivers which are less in the uh, yeah, load okay so these are the uh, three main processes which controls the erosion and if uh, uh, we see that all these processes together will produce number of different geological features in a river system so that will be the topic we'll be discussing in the next lecture that is features of stream erosion